Hey there, Sun Folk. Um, so today, um, I have learned that uh, Muto has discontinued their Value Jet, um, the 24 series um, standard white cartridges that we're all used to, and they are now going to these black MS. What are they? Uh, MS 31 cartridges. Um, Muto and suppliers claim that there will be absolutely zero difference in uh, output, quality, colors, uh, compatibility um, for any printers that were using the previous. Let's turn this thing off here. That's better. So um, they claim that there will be no difference in color, so you don't have to reprofile your printer. Um, they are still genuine OEM Muto inks. Um, today is my. Um, last day of using the ValueJet 24 cartridges, and by the way, I use 220 cartridges. I do not use 440s or bulk ink system. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, so my yellow has expired, and I'm going to start um, shuffling in um, the new cartridges, the MS31 cartridges, and see how everything prints. Um, I would suspect it's probably going to be a couple days before the ink actually gets through the lines where I start doing heavy saturations, but. Um, just a little uh, documenting of how this uh, transition goes. I know there's not a lot of information out there as far as why they did it, but um, I can understand. I mean, the, the old cartridges have been around for better part of 10 years, 11 years, 12 years. I can't remember if the Rock Hopper, I think that's what it was called, uh, the predecessor to the Value Jet lines that have probably been around for nine years, eight years, something like that. Anyways. Um, so I'm going to kind of document, uh, you know, switching these colors over. If there's any problems that I have with my profiling or whether the printer accepts them. Hopefully the chips and everything are the same. But um, yeah, so uh, again, this is the sign guy. I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of information. Hopefully it helps you guys out. And uh, so I'm going to be updating um, as I start printing and hopefully there are no issues. So uh, today is September. Let me look down here. Today is September 15th, and um, so I would suspect this will probably I'll be in full swing probably in about two or three days. I should have all the inks changed over as the old ones expire, which they're all about 5%, 5-10% um, or whatever. So, but uh, yeah, so stick with me. Let's see what happens. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cartridge and we're going to shake them a little bit like I normally do, just kind of give them a little... A little shake here and there. It should be good. Still has the arrow up top. The cartridges themselves should have the same tabs and everything. Um, I don't think that one's bad. Empty, empty. Looks like it acknowledged the chip, so hopefully it all should be good. Time for the black cartridge. Of course, it's the last one down there. Let's get over here. Give it a little shake. Oh boy, time to waste more ink. What do we got? Magenta. Just started a print. This little sucker's been sitting there for about three days. So we'll take magenta, give it a little shake. When was that one? That was uh, July 24th. 
Today is uh, September 21st. Hard to put in. Alright, so um, now we're on science come to an end. So you can see here I've got uh, I got uh, what is it? I don't know. Black cyan magenta yellow. So I'm gonna swap out the cyan. So far, so good. I haven't seen any problems or issues. I mean, print resolution, everything else looks great, but uh, yeah. Pull this out. Shoot. side there's the arrow slide that off again give it a couple good shakes before you put it in there make sure you don't drop it and that. I will say that putting putting them in takes um, a little bit more well I'm gonna say a lot more force to to uh, seat those cartridges for whatever reason the the, uh, the white ones just removed I don't know if it has something to do with the uh, um, yeah, let me look so I know when you uh, when you install the new cartridges you have to poke through that uh, that little hole there to make a zoom in a little bit more but uh, I think there's a little rubber o-ring behind there too. I don't know, maybe they changed those as well. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so now I got all four of the MS31 inks uh, installed on the printer. Um, and again, like I said, I know that that yellow has gone through. Um, I know that some of the other colors have gone through. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over again. So I've done all this printing um, on the new yellow, the new magenta, and the new black. So and so far so good. The colors turned out really good on my profiles. Nothing shifted. Um, everything as it is as it should be. So uh, I'm gonna continue to document and uh, cut a report back. But uh, as you can see, uh, you know, ready to print. Everything should be good. Um, the changeover. Pretty uneventful, but uh, yeah, so we'll keep reporting, and if anything comes up, uh, I'll be sure to uh, let you guys know. See ya. All right, so on, folks. So um, I've got all my Muto ink switched over. You can see I've got the, uh, the four cartridges installed. I've been running them um, for about a week, give or take. Some ran out sooner than others, but I really haven't uh, noticed much of a difference as far as color. Um, and performance wise, I think that they, um, it, it, the, there was a statement that Muto made um, that says that they are a direct replacement, um, that there's no flushing needed, which 
I find um, to be true. Um, I didn't have any problems switching over. The printer accepted the cartridges, so the chips and everything, they, they should be good. But uh, I'm gonna kind of touch on, on something. So I've been doing a little digging and reading, and I assume, um, you know, Muto had a purpose behind doing this. Now, the other rings have been out for a long time. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, te technology evolves and, and things evolve. And, um, you know, th there's a reason for why they did what they did. But I'm going to flip my camera back over here. And so this is something that I printed off of the, the MUTO site. Um, apparently, this statement was put out July 7, 2021. And they go through some of the, um, I, I guess, the highlights um, of... Um, switching over to the MS31 inks, um, which is up here, and I will put a link um, to this page um, down below in the description. So, but essentially, you can kind of read through here. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, some of the key points that they um, talk about is um, uh, it has a, a wider color gamut, uh, better adhesion, improved dot gain, along with excellent excellent weather abrasion, chemical resistance, all result in enriched image quality. Um, they also state that um, these are a direct replacements for the older um, Eco Ultra VJ, the MS Inc. Um, that have now been discontinued. So if you can find them, sometimes you, you sometimes you can. Fellers had a few of them, but I just opted just to get a new batch of the MS31 inks. But they also state that requires no special flushing when switching from one ink to the other, which I found was true. Um, additionally, no special firmware updated is needed. I find that true. Um, uh, the new uh, Eco Sullivan ink also comes in 220, 440 cartridges and 1,000 milliliter, milliliter ink bags. It also states that the Eco Ultra inks are now discontinued and available while supplies last, which is true. So, this kind of brings me to another point. So, with uh, you know evolution and, and printers and everyone kind of advancing their technologies, um, I kind of find that uh, you know the Muto printers. And this is what I read um, from part suppliers and other people that have MUTO printers, genuine MUTO printers, not Prism Jets, but they all kind of apply to the same, um, is that the printer suppliers or the, I'm sorry, the printer uh, manufacturers um, are trying to do away with third-party inks. So certain firmwares on printers, specifically this one, the 1324X, um, are going to make it more difficult for the third-party ink suppliers to be compatible with some of these printers. Um, so you take that with a grain of salt. Uh, again, I only use OEM inks, so it's not really a big issue or problem with me, but there are other high volume shots that, shops that rely on using that third-party ink. Um, but from what I understand, these new printers that Muto was going to be rolling out along with these new cartridges kind of prohibit and eventually someone will find a way around it but uh, there are other printer manufacturers i believe one is uh, mamaki and the other is epson that i don't think are kind of going this route but you know when um when printer manufacturers when they sell a product you know they do make some money on it but when you think about it as a company as a whole you know these things once once it's sold it's sold it doesn't they don't make any more money on it so muto's angle i believe is um by forcing um I, I guess their model now is by forcing you to use um their inks and that there's nothing else compatible with them so i don't know how that's going to help their market or um you know their their base um, again, for me personally, it doesn't make a, a bit of difference to me. Like I said, if the ink's more expensive, then I just have to charge more. There's people that have third-party inks and um, their cost per square foot's not as much as mine, but those aren't the people that I'm competing against. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of my take on it. Um, the other thing that I, that I um, found out, or at least that I, that I read, there, there are some part suppliers for some of these older printers, Mamaki, Epson, uh, Rollins, and all the other stuff. So the one thing that I read was one of the gentlemen said that some of the, in the event that something happens to where these 1324Xs um, or the 16 series, which is I think the 60 inch uh, Mutos that require the DX7 heads, um, they have a shipping fluid in them. Um, when the print head ar arrives, and I guess it's just to um, prohibit the um, 
the head from you know getting clogged or debris or anything getting getting in the head just to make sure i mean you spend that much money and you want a head that works so apparently some of the older um not older but maybe not as new print heads have this shipping fluid in them and if you don't flush that shipping fluid and introduce these ms31 inks it will almost automatically cause a head clog i don't know if you can recover from that if it can be flushed at that point because um, a head clog, from what I understand, would, um, you know, just the two are not compatible at all. And I don't know how you would unclog a new head um, introducing those two things. So um, you have to flush the new head. And it's, I think it was recommended by the gentleman to any print head that you get, DX7 um, or the DX5. I think the DX5 is for the 1204 and 1304, but I believe the 1324s and 1624s. I say that right. And, um, they have the DX7 heads, and some of those those heads have that shipping fluid in them. So um, you need to flush those print heads prior to introducing the MS31 inks. Um, I assume if uh, if you're using a different brand of ink or you use a third party ink, then it's probably not going to be a big issue for you. So um, again, like I said, I'm going on uh, about a week and a half. I think with replacing my yellow, I'm gonna flip over here because I put dates on all of these cartridges when they were replaced so there's the 15th the 17th uh the 21st and um the 22nd so yellow was the first one so um today is uh, september the 27th um so almost you know it, it's going close to two weeks like i said in some of my these are some of the prints like i said that i've got coming out um and and again like i said i can't tell the difference between um any of the uh and any issues with them. So that being said, hope you all do your own research. Um, you know, get your own opinion, wrap your mind around some of this stuff, but, uh, that's my two cents. Hopefully it helps you guys. And, uh, I guess we'll see you next time. See you son, folks.